The Cold War, better known as almost the Third World War, or Good vs. Evil Part 3. Starting off right after the Second World War, Europe was in ruin, and behind the Iron Curtain, Stalin installed communist puppet regimes in every country they quote-unquote liberated. Thank you. Thank you. Stalin. Has freed us. Oh, I wouldn't say free. More like under new management. <laughs> and Stalin had all these new communist states on a very tight leash. Well, not all. Yugoslavia's communist partisans, led by Josip Broz Tito, had largely liberated the country themselves and therefore enjoyed much more autonomy compared to their other communist states. Still, in the beginning the Soviets didn't seem to mind this independence, until Tito started border disputes with most of its neighbours and started plans to incorporate Albania into Yugoslavia. This had Stalin scared shitless. If one of those border disputes were to turn into a war, the Soviet Union would most likely be dragged into it, which was something he desperately wanted to prevent. Not to mention, Albania was of great importance to the Soviets, since it was the only friendly communist nation that the one thing every Russian statesman ever desperately wants, a warm water port in the Mediterranean. So kids, what happens when Stalin is both terrified and pissed? Yep, assassination and disappearing. In this day and age, the Russians are more sophisticated in their ways of deleting their opponents. A shooting, poisoning, locking them up in a solitary confinement in a Siberian prison, starving and torturing them slowly until their body just gives out and they die. Back then, the Russians weren't so subtle. Stalin wanted Tito gone. Apart from trying to instigate a coup against Tito, Stalin also sent multiple assassins, all of whom were captured, tried for treason, and, well, you can probably guess the rest. Understandably, Tito wasn't really pleased with having to dodge attempts on his life, so he wrote Stalin a letter, stating, Stop sending people to kill me. We've already captured five of them, one of them with a bomb and another with a rifle. If you don't stop sending killers, I'll send one to Moscow, and I won't have to send a second. Damn, that's so badass, you almost forget that Tito was an abhorrent dictator. Anyway, staying with the topic of failed assassinations, Fidel Castro. Just like the Soviets weren't too keen on an independent Yugoslavia fucking things up in the Balkan, the Americans weren't happy with the communist Cuba right next to their funny news article state. So, just like Tito, Fidel Castro, the leader of communist Cuba, had to go. And who's better to do it than the CIA? Everybody knows the CIA. Apart from being the organization that gives out the highest award in journalism, they were also the go-to guys for a Cuba Libre. And they succeeded when Castro was finally assassinated by being surrounded by loved ones and dying in his sleep at the age of 90 in 2008 after surviving over 600 CIA assassination attempts? Some of these attempts were just straight up Looney Tunes shit. These are just some of the things the CIA tried to kill Castro with. Exploding cigars. Poison cigars, a diving suit lined with flesh-eating fungus and tuberculosis in his respirator, an extra pretty seashell that was actually a bomb, poisoned ice cream, a poisoned pen. They even got one of his ex-lovers involved. That one just reads like a James Bond movie. Apparently, the woman was supposed to carry poison pills inside a jar of hand cream, but the pills had melted into the cream, rendering them unusable. In the meantime, Castro had found out about the attempt and confronted her with it. He even handed her his gun, saying, You can't kill me. Nobody can kill me. After which, well, they... Let's just say they did the horizontal tango. But the CIA wasn't just trying to kill him proper. They also did multiple attempts to assassinate his character, his popularity. For example, they tried to ruin his national address by pumping LSD into the air vents. They even went after his famous bushy beard, trying to destroy it with thallium salts. The CIA wanted Castro gone so bad that they even put a handsome reward on his head. A grand total of two cents. Now I know people in communist countries are poor, but two cents is low even for communist countries. This reward was more the CIA's way of saying, <laughs> Well fine, we, we, we didn't want you anyway. <laughs> It is said that war is one of the great drivers of science. Well, the Cold War brought us one step closer to having actual real-life cyborgs. Introducing Operation Acoustic Kitty. 
Despite his name, this wasn't some fucked up form of taxidermy, nor was it an attempt to train feline guitarists, though that would have been extremely adorable. No, Operation Acoustic Kitty was the plan to use cats for espionage on Russian embassies. The idea was that cats, being the lovable little maniacs that they are, could get in literally anywhere without arousing suspicion. So one hour and 20 million dollars in black budget funds later, which by the way translates to around 200 million dollars in 2024 money, the CIA had a cat with a tiny microphone implanted in its ear canal and a transmitter embedded in its skull. This cute little amalgamation of man and machine was then let loose to eavesdrop on two men in a park opposite the Soviet embassy in Washington DC. Almost immediately, our Adeptus Mechanicus cat was hit by a taxi and turned into the world's most expensive roadkill. So kids, what did we learn from today's video? Nothing? Well, then my worker is done. See you next time.